Well, I guess while I was researching FlowHub, because prior to interacting with you, I wasn't fully familiar with all that it did. I thought it was just squ- competitor to Square. Um, oh, no. Yeah, yeah no, there's all. a lot more there. <laughs> I would want to ask if your any of your server infrastructure has experienced strain as a result of the coronavirus situation and the increases in traffic to dispensaries. Really good question. You know, we actually support about a thousand dispensaries across 14 states, and um, we have had zero latency with our infrastructure. We're on Google Cloud services, okay. and we do have some uh, backed up redundancy on AWS as well. So we have okay. a really, really strong strong infrastructure and we haven't noticed anything. Now it's a web-based platform. Mm-hmm. So like anything else, a lot of it depends on the server that our it's, customers are using. But yeah, but, if you're if you're using Google and Amazon as your cloud structure, you probably wouldn't experience much of a hit since it's broken up so effectively. Have you guys had to do anything specific as a reaction to the coronavirus? Or do you think that your your guys' company, because of its digital nature, was already prepared for uh, these sort of use case scenarios? Oh, God, you know, we've had to do a lot of things differently, you know, um, you know, both as a company and then for our customers. So, you know, specifically for our customers, you know, the first thing uh, we did about three weeks ago when we really realized just how severe this was going to be is um, I got together with the marketing team and some of the other people in our company, and we just built out all these SOPs for online ordering, for curbside pickup, for social distancing, if your dispensary is going to remain open, um, our marketing oh, team put wow, together a lot so... of really good, yeah, just, just trying to educate people, you know, and then a lot of it is reading the regulations. Like when I first heard about the curbside pickup, it was one of our customers out in Michigan and they put it out on LinkedIn that they were doing this and called them. I said, hey, is this legal? I mean, it's brilliant, but don't you have to accept payment inside and stuff? And she's like, no, you know, we actually called the state and they gave us a waiver to do this. And then you started seeing everyone else following suit. So that was a common citizen out in Michigan, a phenomenal company out there. And then, so we did a lot of SOPs, made sure that our customers who weren't doing online ordering understood who we partner with to do online ordering, whether it's through Dutchie or Jane or someone else like that, and made sure that we had the connections to our software because you do have to install that and get it set up. It's not just, hey, I want to do online ordering and you can just start doing it right away. So we had to go through and educate everyone on that. Um, so that's been a huge change for us. And then obviously some of the the shifting of what we're doing with um, making sure we could support all of that. So we had to reconfigure some of our roadmap. And then as a company, it's really funny. Um, gosh, I guess probably six weeks ago, we said, hey, you know, this is getting kind of scary. We're going to do an emergency disaster test. And we're all going to work from home for three days, the entire company. We have this beautiful new office in downtown Denver where we have about 85 employees. And you know we're fortunate to have a, a great culture where we all enjoy going to the office. But we wanted to see everyone, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, everyone work from home. We want to make sure that we can still do this. And then on that Thursday, it hit. And we're like, shit, we don't know when we're going back. And I've lost track of time. I think that was four weeks ago. I don't even know. So it's been so weird the way we've had to adopt our data day everyone you know i relate to that so hard and everything else yeah it's it's like at one point it sucks the other point's really inspiring to see just how easy it is for us to adapt and just to keep things going um you know it's cool we're, we're very evolutionary and we're very adaptable people and we're so fortunate to be a software company you know like both my wife and i work in software and as an aside it's just you know our jobs are secure right now and i really feel for people who have those jobs that just aren't there right now because they just don't have consumers and it's terrifying so like so much of what we're doing now is just trying to figure out how we can give back how we could support people um what tools we have that we could you know disseminate and kind of help people get through this 